What's up everybody, I'm S2 Jesse. Welcome to Making and Breaking. Today we're gonna to be making Raised Blaster part five. I think it's gonna be the second to last episode. We're gonna make the grips, we're gonna put it all together and it's finally gonna look like a blaster. All right guys, so I said in the video, today is gonna to be the second to last part in this series. So um, this one, we're just gonna finish up the grips. We're gonna to put together our water jet parts. We're gonna assemble it all. It's gonna finally look like Ray's Blaster. It's kind of a pretty exciting uh, time. Um, and then the uh, final part's probably just gonna be some of the last finishing, like polishing and weathering and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyways, here we go. So I'm gonna make the little safety knob. So the first thing I'm gonna do is knurl it. And then I'm gonna use a quarter inch uh, ball end mill, just what I had on hand in order to cut in that little recess on the front. And I'm gonna part it off and just chuck it in the mill and um, using Fusion and HSM, cut out a little slot that it can ride in uh, into the frame. So cut a little hole, thread it by hand. Um, the service finish turned out pretty good. Um, it's the first time machining stainless steel. Got all my parts back from water jet cutting. It turned out awesome. Pretty much all the thin parts I got cut just worked a lot quicker to cut them on a water jet than mill them all out. So I just kind of run a test fit everything. I uh, was pretty confident it was going to fit together as long as the water jet was accurate uh, because I 3D printed everything and it all fit together first. So everything went together real smooth. All the Torx uh, screws went together, all the uh, plates fit together. Uh, checked out the safety. Safety works pretty good. All the barrel and barrel adapter fit perfectly, nice and smooth. And there she is, all assembled for, for the first time. Um, turned out pretty awesome, pretty excited. I got to cut the little grooves in the side and put the grips on, but turned out awesome. So in order to mill the uh, slots on the uh, little side panels, I needed to make a fixture to hold them down. So using the same method as I did on the inner grips, I kind of made like a little pallet that fits in the vise there and just you know, use fusion and um, I just milled out a little pocket that I could bolt the uh, plates down to. So as you can see they fit perfect, you just put them in, push them up to the left and then screw them down and then cut the slots. These slots look a lot wider than they actually are, there's like a burr on the end that makes them kind of look like it. They're actually a one thirty second wide. Now it's on to the grip. So I actually used a combination of 3CO Max, Fusion, and a program called ZBrush, which is more of like a sculpting program. But I do, I make games for a living, so kind of just used to working with it. It's good for, you know, doing a lot of like hand sculpting and fixing. So anyway, I'm going to print these on my Form 1. It's an SLA printer. It uses a laser to harden light sensitive resin, layer by layer. It produces a lot more detail and doesn't really require much uh, cleanup after printing. I used their software to kind of set up the slicer and sent it off to the printer. And so again, you'll see how this works. Basically the platen comes down, dips into the resin, and then from underneath a laser solidifies the resin layer by layer. So you can't really see it too well, but um, it kind of gives you the impression of what's happening there. So I came in the next day, the thing was done, it took about six hours to print. Um, what you do is you just pull the platen off and you, it's a little bit different than uh, FDM printers because uh, this was, basically has a lot of uncured resin and what you do is you take it and uh, you soak it in alcohol. And so I have two alcohol baths. One is kind of the dirty solution which you you know you use to get most of it off and then you put it into a cleaner solution for the, the last little bits. Now I'm just going to basically break all the sprues off. They bust off really easy. The thing does a really good job of laying them out. And I'm just going to kind of sand them flat and give them a quick little test fit. Um, works perfect. A little more sanding once it's on there. And these things are prepped and ready for some paint. So the first thing I'm doing is hitting with a little primer. Uh, just to make sure everything's real smooth and clear. Since I'm going to be casting these, it doesn't really matter what color they are. But... I, the casting picks up all those surface details, so I'm using some acrylic clear to give it a kind of a glossy coat because it'll actually pick that up in the uh, molding and casting. Just did about three layers of that, put, put them on real light. Uh, so now we're gonna start molding. Got to make the little, uh, got to make a box to hold the silicone. So I'm just gonna use plexiglass, and uh, you can cut that out on a cut that on a chop saw. But I'm gonna use this. Uh, Laser cutter. So I built this thing for under a thousand bucks. It started with a cheapo 
$300 K40 off eBay and upgraded the controller and a bunch of other stuff. I'm gonna do a cool video on how to do that um, next. It's kind of a really cool project, a super handy thing to have. So, so, and it works super good. So it's basically using a little bit of hot glue and kind of welding the box together, just making sure there's no leaks. Uh, I'm gonna make sure it's gonna hold enough silicone. Just use a little super glue to just kind of hold the uh, grips down so they don't float up. Here's my little casting and uh, mold making station. Got a little uh, vacuum chamber and vacuum pump. And then on this side, got the um, pressure pot. All right, so now it's time to mix up the silicone. So this is what I had on hand. It happens to be clear, which is kind of cool. It might be a good example to show the process since it'll kind of show all the bubbles and everything. So this particular silicone, you mix uh, equal parts A and B, and you gotta mix them up really good. So what I do is after I've mixed the first two parts, I pour them into a third cup, and that way I make sure that there's no residue left on the edges and stuff. So again, just mix them up really, really good. And you can see here how many bubbles are introduced into it. The thicker the viscosity, the more bubbles are gonna be. And so that's why sometimes you have to vacuum degas. And vacuum degas, what it does is it basically creates a vacuum that sucks out all the bubbles. So it's pulling all the air out of the silicone. And one of the keys is you got to use a container that's twice as big as uh, your silicone um, because it'll bubble over. Uh, you'll see kind of how that works. So as you can see, it starts to pull a vacuum and it rises up and you got to break the vacuum in order to pop all those bubbles. Uh, my container is a little bit too small, so I couldn't quite pull full enough vacuum and that was kind of a mistake. Uh, but anyway, I got most of it out. Then you want to pour it in. You want to pour it in on one corner and just kind of let it flow over everything. I kind of sped it up here because this stuff moves like molasses. This is a little bit of a fail. Um, it ended up having way too many bubbles in it, even for vacuum degassing. I wasn't able to quite degas it fully because that container was too small. Uh, so I'm going to kind of fix it by putting it in the pressure pot. And what that does is it creates pressure and squeezes all the bubbles into a really small area. But you have to leave it in pressure the whole time it's curing. So yeah, so let's pull this thing out. It turned out pretty good. Pulled it out of the pressure pot. There's no bubbles. It kind of fixed our problem. Uh, and then I added some mold release. So I'm just using Vaseline. I didn't have anything else. Silicone only sticks to silicone. So you really only need to make sure you're getting the mold release on the actual silicone or else you won't be able to pull it apart. So then I made another little mold box and then I added some uh, pore spouts just using some cut off sharpies and some air vents. I mixed up some more silicone. This stuff had a much lower viscosity and I vacuum degassed it. It worked perfectly. And then just poured it in the mold box and then just let the silicone cure and pull it out and it turned out perfect. So I just ripped the mold box apart, pull off all the pore spouts and the uh, vents and let's see how it turned out. There it is. So basically the top layer comes right off, pop these out and looks great. Turned out super smooth, nice and glossy. I think it's going to work out great. All right, now the molds are done, it's time for casting. So I'm using some of this black onyx uh, resin from Smooth On. Stuff is ridiculous. That's a 2.5 uh, minute working time. So you have to be ridiculously fast. So you just mix uh, equal parts A and B and stir them up quick. You got to, I'm telling you real quick, this stuff starts to harden fast. So you got to mix it up quick. And again, I'm using a pressure pot. This is going to press all the little bubbles into tiny pin size um, holes. So I'm going to mix it up quick, going to pour it in really quick, uh, put the lid onto this thing and pressurize it. And we're basically going to need to pressurize it between uh, somewhere between like 30 and 50 PSI. Um, I made this little Harbor Freight, you know, paint sprayer conversion in order to do it. It's not an actual dedicated pressure pot, uh, which can be kind of dangerous because working with pressure is kind of scary. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, here it is. So it's pressurized up and um, let it sit there for about 10 minutes and it's cured. And basically, then we can open it up, pull it out and see how it, how it looks. So it's been 10 minutes, so let's uh, pop this sucker open and take a look. So there it is. Uh, if you pull it out early enough, um, it's hard, but it actually you can still rip off the sprues and stuff pretty easily and trim some of the uh, excess off. If you wait too long, it solidifies uh, too solid. It's too solid and then it makes it difficult to cut any of the uh, flashing off. So. so you can see it'll, it'll pop out of the mold really easy. Silicone releases super well. And hopefully it got all our detail. Uh, there it is. Look at that uh, smooth surface. It picked up that gloss from that acrylic paint perfectly. As you can see, you can kind of just rip that off right now. That's. Uh, I'll give it a little quick test fit, and there you go. Looks uh, looks pretty good.
And that's with no cleanup at all, it's just straight out of the mold. So, uh, there it is. So, um, pretty much got a little couple little tiny things to finish up on it. And the next episode, we're gonna polish, we're gonna polish everything up and do some weathering and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, if you liked anything you saw, please like, share, subscribe. Um, and I also started an Instagram, it's just S2Jesse. Um, haven't really used that before, so I'm just kind of getting that going right now. So, we put a lot more uh, like in progress pictures and stuff on there. So, uh, see you next time. If you find anything useful in these videos, uh, feel free to subscribe or share or uh, comment.